I went into today looking to test just one thing and came out with six. Yup. That sounds about on par for me, everyone. But we'll soon be facing down the Fuel Weaver in our Wes Wednesday series. And a particular method just kept nagging at my brain. So yes, we will see that here today. But let me make a few things clear. No, this is not a Fuel Weaver revisit per se, although I wouldn't mind doing so one day. No, this is not going to be a typical guide as it will serve more as a showcase of various methods of murder back to back to back. And yes, there will be a couple glitches among it all, so viewer discretion is advised. But yes, let us begin with the potential method that I've been alluding to as of late, and it's the one that prompted this video. The one that uses rock lobsters, everyone. Just to see if it was even halfway viable, I assembled a team of but nine rock lobsters at their base stage of growth. Meaning that they only had 2,250-ish health and dealt about 56.4 damage each per swing. And that is nothing, as rock lobsters grow about every four days and can eventually reach health levels of 3,600 total and deal a whopping 90 damage instead once fully grown. So with that, I gotta say, I liked what I saw. But obviously, there are pros and cons to every method. So let's be sure to cover them before we actually move on. And the pros are as follows. Rock lobsters boast great health and damage even at their lowest as we've seen. They dodge the weaver's attacks very often, which leads to them regenerating health often and quickly, mind you. But the best part is when they do go into their rock form, they block the woven shadows from even reaching the fuel weaver himself. And that's huge. It's not perfect, mind you, but greater numbers will obviously make that less of an issue. The problems, however, are that rock lobsters cover a lot, which lowers the DPS. They may even block you if you aren't careful. They are slow, and yes, it's not going to be easy actually getting them there. But followers teleport to you if you get far enough away too quickly. So there's that. Use it to your advantage. All in all, it is absolutely a possibility. I would up the numbers and of course make sure they're fully grown or at least pretty close to it and the lobsters are going to make this really easy. So then, in a similar vein, how about Bunnyman or even Merm's beard? Well, the Merm's may not actually be a terrible idea, although we'll be saving the prospect of Merm's versus bosses for another day I think. The Bunnymen, on the other hand are worthless everyone, completely utterly worthless. They scatter due to fear. The Fuel Weaver's Bone Helm melee attack hits multiple targets at once. His Bone Cage actually captures Bunnymen, which even I didn't know was a thing. And in the end, his attacks just deal too much damage. But Beard, why would Merms be any different than... Ah, yes. Speed, friend. Speed may be the key. But then, here's actually a question to build off that. What is the fastest way to even kill the Ancient Fuel Weaver Beard? Oh, folks, that has, and very likely will always be, the Gunpowder Method. It has been around for a very long time, and quite frankly, I'm very surprised it still works to this day. But, I do suppose scrounging up all the necessary gunpowder is obviously a limiting factor, that's why it's probably still in the game. But, here's the short of it everyone, two stacks of gunpowder can kill the Fuel Weaver in roughly 50 to 60 seconds in the majority of cases that is, as a single stack of gunpowder deals a whopping 8,000 damage. So, obviously, if I do my maths, two defeat him entirely. Now, I know what you're asking. Why not just drop both stacks of gunpowder immediately for one huge blast of 16,000 damage? It's a fair ask. However, gunpowder and Don't Starve Together comes at a cost. For you see, bosses in this game have explosive resistance. And setting off too much or multiple explosions near them too quickly simply won't work, everyone. Therefore, you will need to blow him up once during his initial spawn, wait at least 10 seconds for the explosive resistance to go away, which means you're probably going to have to go one wave of woven shadows and shadow hands, making really sure he doesn't get above 8,000 health, or at least not too far above, then lure him into the second blast ever so carefully, and hopefully, boom, you've got him. Well done. 
Oh, but here's a fun one. Albeit it is a character exclusive setup, mind you. Winona's catapults are honestly some of the best weapons in this entire game. And if you don't yet know, or quite understand why that is, then you better get to it, because you're missing out. Now, we have actually already showcased the method of using said catapults against the Fuel Weaver a long time ago. However, I was a wuss and actually set them up outside the arena and then camped the edges. We can't really do that anymore, so you need to be absolutely sure to place your generators and catapults as far into the edges as you can to avoid catastrophe. Cause here's the thing, nearly every single one of the Fuel Weaver's attacks, even his mechanic of spawning in the woven shadows, can practically instantly destroy your machines. So yeah, not good. But the good news is this. Do it right, and the fight is an absolute joke, as the catapults will absolutely decimate the Fuel Weaver himself, and then all the woven shadows that he spawns when they try to crawl near to him. But good luck. But yes, it's that time, everyone. These next two are both a pseudo glitch and a real glitch. So use them as you please, but don't shame others for what they do or don't agree with. But first things first, build the proper fossil combination and then plant at least three, but preferably five to seven lure plant bulbs, not only really close to the fossil combination, but to each other as well, so that nothing can pass between them. Then, give the Shadow Atrium to the Fossil to thus spawn the Fuel Weaver. Use a Lazy Explorer or Soul Hop to literally jump out of the Ancient Gateway Arena. Quickly move to deal some ranged damage to the Weaver to thus have the Houndius Shootius begin to fire at him immediately. Back off into a corner and literally just wait till it's dead. Yup. If done correctly, that's the method, folks. And all you have to do is literally stand there for like 15 minutes and the Houdius will do all the work for you. Now, to be honest, I am shocked that this is still working, as I've heard that it wasn't any longer, but to my surprise, it worked like a bloody charm here today. As it used to be that the fuel just wouldn't target lure plants for whatever reason, but I can tell you now, he does so today. So I'll just come right and say that I have no clue as to why this works anymore. But hey, it's a method for sure. And heck, by the time you'll be looking to do fuel, you'll have already killed Deerclops and the Ancient Guardian for the materials needed for a Houndius Shootius anyways, and if a spring or two has passed, then you'll likely have encountered the required lure plants too. So, there you go. And another thing about this method is that each subsequent Fuel Weaver cycle will simply just make things faster for the next Fuel Weaver fights, as more Deerclopses and Guardians will be needing a murdering anyways. So enjoy. But now the total glitch method. One that also surprised me is I couldn't believe that it still worked after all these years, and one that may be a bit too cheesy for my taste, but hey, that's not what we're here to discuss today. Pay close attention though, to where I stand once the Fuel Weaver initially spawns in and when he goes to hit me for the first time, as I telepoof away, mind you. For whatever reason, this movement really screws up his pathing and it still hasn't been fixed for like three years at this point. But we can use this oddity to our advantage by then placing a single lure plant bulb as close to him as we can right underneath where he is standing. That's important. Now, it is a tricky placement, and most of the time, he just gets pushed to the side and escapes. However, if done correctly, he will be forced into the ancient fences, which are locked in the upright position due to an activated atrium, and thus are inescapable, even by the biggest bad of them all. So then, teleport behind him so he can't target to you and potentially swing himself free, mind you, and then just beat him to death. Yup, <laughs> that's it. He cannot move, cannot melee, and cannot cast spells. So all you have to do is stand and deliver until he is dead. So throw in a Bee Queen helmet, which is something you should always have for this fight to begin with, to make sure you don't go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs along the way, and you'll be good to go. Oh, and don't worry about any of his loot falling into the void as well, because it can't really, as it will get trapped just as much as he does. So, you should be fine. Now, whether or not this method is fine and should be allowed is another thing entirely, but hey, 
don't shoot the messenger. And there you have it, everyone. A random hodgepodge of methods for the Ancient Fuel Weaver. Now, this was not at all what I was looking to accomplish here today. So I'm sorry if this is a bit off-putting, as it's, again, not one of our typical videos. But I think it will help out in the long run, nonetheless. And if any of these methods intrigue you guys enough, and you want me to flesh them out more individually, then let me know. Also, be sure to tell me which you'd like to see us do in our West Wednesday series soon. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Be nice about all this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.